The Book of Kings is a book in the Hebrew Bible and two books in the Christian Old Testament. It concludes the Deuteronomistic history, a history of Israel also including the books of Joshua and Judges and the books of Samuel. Biblical commentators believe the books of Kings were written to provide a theological explanation for the destruction of the kingdom of Judah by Babylon in c. 586 BCE and to provide a foundation for a return from Babylonian exile. The two books of Kings present a history of ancient Israel and Judah, from the death of King David to the release of Jehoiakim from imprisonment in Babylon, a period of some 400 years. Scholars tend to treat the books as consisting of a first edition from the late 7th century BCE and of a second and final edition from the mid-6th century BCE. Solomon greeting the Queen of Sheba, Gate of Florence Baptistry The Jerusalem Bible divides the two books of Kings into eight sections, in David's old age. Adonijah proclaims himself David's successor. But Solomon's supporters arrange for David to proclaim Solomon as his successor, and he comes to the throne after David's death. At the beginning of his reign, Solomon assumes God's promises to David and brings splendor to Israel and peace and prosperity to his people. The centerpiece of Solomon's reign is the building of the first temple. The claim that this took place 480 years after the exodus from Egypt marks it as a key event in Israel's history. Eventually, Solomon follows other gods and oppresses Israel. As a consequence of Solomon's failure to stamp out the worship of gods other than Yahweh, The kingdom of David is split in two during the reign of Solomon's son Rehoboam, who becomes the first king to reign over the kingdom of Judah. The kings who follow Rehoboam in Jerusalem continue the royal line of David, I. E. They inherit Yahweh's promise to David. In the north, however, dynasties follow each other in rapid succession, and the kings are uniformly bad, I. E. They fail to follow Yahweh alone. At length God brings the Assyrians to destroy the northern kingdom, leaving Judah as the sole custodian of the promise. Hezekiah, the thirteenth king of Judah, does what, is, right in the Lord's sight just as his ancestor David had done he institutes a far-reaching religious reform, centralizing sacrifice at the temple in Jerusalem, and destroying the images of other gods. Yahweh saves Jerusalem and the kingdom from an invasion by Assyria. But Manasseh, the next king of Judah, reverses the reforms, and God announces that he will destroy Jerusalem because of this apostasy by the king. Manasseh's righteous grandson Josiah reinstitutes the reforms of Hezekiah, but it is too late, God, speaking through the prophetess Huldah, affirms that Jerusalem shall be destroyed after the death of Josiah. In the final chapters, God brings the Neo-Babylonian empire of King Nebuchadnezzar against Jerusalem. Yahweh withholds aid from his people, Jerusalem is razed and the temple destroyed, and the priests, prophets, and royal court are led into captivity. The final verses record how Jehoiakim, the last king, is set free and given honor by the king of Babylon. Rembrandt, Jeremiah lamenting the destruction of Jerusalem, c. 1630. In the Hebrew Bible, 1st and 2nd Kings are a single book, as are the 1st and 2nd books of Samuel. When this was translated into Greek in the last few centuries BCE, Samuel was joined with kings in a four-part work called the Book of Kingdoms. Orthodox Christians continue to use the Greek translation, but when a Latin translation was made for the Western Church. Kingdoms was first retitled the Book of Kings, parts 1-4, and eventually both Samuel and Kings were separated into two books each. Thus, the books now commonly known as 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel are known in the Vulgate as 1 Kings and 2 Kings. What are now commonly known as 1 Kings and 2 Kings would be 3 Kings and 4 Kings in Old Bibles before the year 1516, such as in the Vulgate and the Septuagint. The division known today, used by Protestant Bibles and adopted by Catholics, came into use in 1517. Some Bibles, for example, the douay Reims Bible, still preserve the old denomination. According to Jewish tradition the author of Kings was Jeremiah, who would have been alive during the fall of Jerusalem in 586 BCE. The most common view. Today accepts Martin Noth's thesis that Kings concludes a unified series of books which reflect the language and theology of the book of Deuteronomy. And which biblical scholars therefore call the Deuteronomistic history. Noth argued that the history was the work of a single individual living in the 6th century BCE, but scholars today tend to treat it as made up of at least two layers, a first edition from the time of Josiah promoting Josiah's religious reforms and the need for repentance, and a second and final edition from the mid-6th century BCE. Further levels of editing have also been proposed. 
including, a late 8th century BC edition pointing to Hezekiah of Judah as the model for kingship, an earlier 8th century BC version with a similar message but identifying Jehu of Israel as the ideal king, and an even earlier version promoting the house of David as the key to national well-being. The editor-slash-authors of the Deuteronomistic History cite a number of sources, including a book of the Acts of Solomon and, frequently, the Annals of the Kings of Judah and a separate book, Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. The Deuteronomic perspective is particularly evident in prayers and speeches spoken by key figures at major transition points. Solomon's speech at the dedication of the Temple is a key example. The sources have been heavily edited to meet the Deuteronomistic agenda, but in the broadest sense they appear to have been, Three of the Dead Sea Scrolls feature parts of Kings, 5 QKGS, found in Qumran K5. Contains parts of 1 Kings 1, 6 QPAP KGS, found in Qumran K6, contains 94 fragments from all over the two books, and 4 QKGS, found in Qumran K4, contains parts of 1 Kings 7-8. The earliest complete surviving copy of the Book of Kings is in the Aleppo Codex. The Kings of Israel and Judah Kings is history-like rather than history in the modern sense, mixing legends, folk tales, miracle stories and fictional constructions in with the annals. And its primary explanation for all that happens is God's offended sense of what is right, it is therefore more fruitful to read it as theological literature in the form of history. The theological bias is seen in the way it judges each king of Israel on the basis of whether he recognizes the authority of the temple in Jerusalem, and each king of Judah on the basis of whether he destroys the high places, it gives only passing mention to important and successful kings like Omri and Jeroboam II and totally ignores one of the most significant events in ancient Israel's history. The Battle of Karkar. The major themes of kings are God's promise, the recurrent apostasy of the kings, and the judgment this brings on Israel, another and related theme is that of prophecy. The main point of the prophetic stories is that God's prophecies are always fulfilled, so that any not yet fulfilled will be so in the future. The Implication the release of Jehoiakim and his restoration to a place of honor in Babylon in the closing scenes of the book, is that the promise of an eternal Davidic dynasty is still in effect, and that the Davidic line will be restored. James Tissot, The Flight of the Prisoners, The Fall of Jerusalem, 586 BC The Standard Hebrew Text of Kings presents an impossible chronology. To take just a single example, Omri's accession to the throne of Israel is dated to the 31st year of Asa of Judah meanwhile the ascension of his predecessor, Zimri, who reigned for only a week, is dated to the 27th year of Asa. The Greek text corrects the impossibilities but does not seem to represent an earlier version. A large number of scholars have claimed to solve the difficulties, but the results differ, sometimes widely, and none has achieved consensus status. The Book 2 Chronicles covers much the same time period as the Books of Kings, but it ignores the northern kingdom of Israel almost completely. David is given a major role in planning the temple. Hezekiah is given a much more far-reaching program of reform, and Manasseh of Judah is given an opportunity to repent of his sins, apparently to account for his long reign. It is usually assumed that the author of Chronicles used Kings as a source and emphasized different areas as he would have liked it to have been interpreted. Thanks for watching.